Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to welcome you out to the Whitfield Harrington Show. This is a show where we take a look at things that are going on in our natural world, and we try to see things through a set of spiritual lenses. So as always, let me begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this show. We thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to speak to your people the words of wisdom that you have imparted in my spirit. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight and that the words that I speak would bring life to the people of God as they hear these words this night. We thank you for all of these things now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. I'm dealing with a subject that you don't hear a lot about, uh, but it certainly needs to be talked about. Tonight I'm talking about um, a continuation of a series I started on YouTube that's talking about disarming the powers of witchcraft. But tonight I want to talk about dealing with witchcraft in the workplace. Dealing with witchcraft in the workplace. This is not a, um, a very easy subject to discuss, but I'll share what I do know just so we would understand. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Um, one of the things I want to point out very quickly is from the word of God. Just because witchcraft is in a place, that doesn't mean you can't prosper. A lot of times um, people don't know witchcraft is in operation and jobs they don't know it's in operation in the workplace. And a lot of times those people who are working witchcraft, they're the ones who are controlling the management positions. In many cases, they, they, they go up the chain of command rather quickly because they're using um, a source of, of sorcery, divination, witchcraft as a means to get ahead. But I want to remind you before I even really get into the teaching that Egypt was full of witchcraft, but yet Joseph became the prime minister. Babylon had sorcerers, magicians, but yet Daniel became somewhat the second in command while there. So it shows you that although those powers are at work, you as a child of God can still prosper in that environment. Now, the reason why I read Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, because it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Understand that there is a power that controls the atmosphere of your workplace. Now, if it's an evil power, there are evil spirits. They control the environment of certain companies. It could be a spirit of greed. It could be a lying spirit. It could be a spirit of adultery um, where people are constantly you know, harassed sexually. And these are spirits that operate there. And there are satanic agents, representatives, who work witchcraft in that feel or in that job or in that workplace. And it is their responsibility to maintain sort of an altar that allows the powers of witchcraft in that place of work to continue to function. And so what happens is, is when a person who was a child of God comes into the company, they come in as a light in a dark place. Demons hate light. They don't want anyone in the building who's a child of God. They don't want anyone in the building who would stop on their 15-minute breaks and take out a Bible. They don't want anyone in the building who would take a moment and just pray because it disrupts their ability to function. It hinders their ability to function and to totally dominate the environment. And so what ends up happening is that the child of God will begin to um, come under a lot of scrutiny, where they're scrutinized for every little thing, um, and, they don't, and they think that just people are just picking on them. But the reality of it is a little deeper than that. The reality of it is your presence is in contention with the presence of evil. The Holy Spirit within you is contending with the evil activities that are functioning there at the place of your job, at the place of your employment. 
for your business. And so what happens is there's like two altars, two evil altars are operating. Uh, two altars. One is evil and one is good. Let me clarify that. There are two altars that are operating. One from the child of God that is there in that place. And the other one is from the satanic agent that is there in the place. And there are certain things you need to know because I'm teaching on how to disarm the powers of witchcraft in the workplace. I'm not teaching you how to confront it. All right. I'm teaching you how to position yourself to be able to disarm it to where, just like you saw Joseph rise to prime minister and Daniel rise to, to, to second in command in Babylon, there's a way to still rise without having to openly confront. Because there's certain things I want to point out tonight. There's certain things that I think that you should never do uh, unless you are led by the Holy Spirit to do. One of the things I will point out very Seriously, is never openly confront where there are witchcraft activities. Don't confront the people. Don't come out and you're a witch. You're into this and you're into that. Do not do that. Um, and one of the main reasons I would advise you not to do that is you don't want your name to be circulated from witchcraft coven to witchcraft coven to witchcraft coven. Um, and that's mainly for individuals who learn how to defeat witchcraft. Once you learn um, the, 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 the things that I'm laying out from the defensive perspective, once you learn how to get around it, what happens is a lot of times they will take your case to someone else that's more skilled. And if you can beat that, they'll take it to someone else that's more skilled. So, uh, and a lot of times that's caused by being confrontational rather than taking the role of just being sincere into the Lord and knowing how to put up safeguards against it. So number one, I would say never openly confront witchcraft activities in the place of work. Even if you're skilled and know how to deal with it, I would advise you not to do it. Number two, hear me and hear me well. Number two is do not quit your job. Whatever you do, do not quit your job. Because a lot of times those evil forces, those evil powers, they will do everything possible and to make you feel like you're unwelcome, unwanted, unappreciative, and you should just quit. And then when you quit, those spirits will gang up on you and they will fight every job application that you present. So don't quit. The best thing to do, I'll share this with you in just a second, is to start submitting your resume to other places, all right? Because evil spirits that are that are on the sixth floor of a building, they don't like the evil spirits on the ninth floor. And if you being promoted to the ninth floor will weaken the ninth floor, but kind of give the sixth floor some relief, the evil spirits on the sixth floor would rather see you promoted. But the evil spirits on the ninth floor don't want you to come there either. But at the same time, this is, this is the way you rise. You have to be aware that there's a still a way to rise, but you don't quit your job because they want you to quit your job and they will fight you from ever getting another job. Uh, number three, um, don't engage in direct confrontation with witchcraft activities without adequate knowledge of what you're doing. Don't just assume that I'm gonna I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna pray this, and I'm gonna pray that. Wait for the Lord to give you revelations concerning those things before you engage in it. Number four, be very careful about receiving gifts from the job. All right. A lot of times people have things where they they come in and they want to give you things um, that you know they cook. And they have these meals coming from these places that they've catered. And now that's not to say that all things are evil that's presented to you in the break room. But when you can sense that you are being pushed out the door because of witchcraft activities, don't be the one to sit down and to swallow everything that they give to you to eat. All right. Um, after all, when we take a look at um, Adam and Eve, what was it that got them in trouble? It was food. 
So God created the Garden of Eden. He created all the trees and the fruits and the vegetables for them to eat and the herbs. But he had one tree that was there, which was the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they couldn't touch nor could they eat. And what's interesting about this is God was saying to them in so many words, you cannot eat everything you see. Think about that. He gave them all of those things to eat, but yet he reserved one tree and told them you can't eat, which in essence is you cannot eat everything you see. There are certain restaurants that you can go into, um, certain certain restaurants that you go into, and when you go in there, there's a little fat man standing out with a big stomach with his hands up at the end of it, maybe at the door, maybe near the bar, and it's a Buddha statue. And normally that food has been offered up unto that idol. And when you begin to partake of that food, it defiles you, all right? And when that defilement happens, it opens a door for witchcraft attacks to come into your life. So that's why when, you, when you're experiencing these type of things at work, you have to be very careful about who's bringing food to you, all right? Begin to pray over it and say, well, you know, I'm on a diet at the moment. You know, I got a, a strict... <laughs> Um, appetite, which is, I'm not eating everybody's food, my appetite, or my diet. Um, and you kind of reserve yourself and do your own cooking. So, and another thing I want to point out, there's some things that I want to point out real quickly while I still have some time, is this is the time that you begin to pray for spiritual promotions. And you pray for promotions on the job. You pray for that increase in income. If they mistreat you where you are, then begin to pray that God will bless you and take you somewhere else. So once you're there, you can begin to pray. And God will share things with you that would help you to go into different avenues to where you can get a promotion rather than a demotion. So this is the time to expect open doors. I mean, after all, everybody else was bowing to a golden image, and it was the one who chose not to bow who ended up being promoted. All right? Um, now, another thing you must do is you must pay close attention to your dreams during this time. If you're experiencing some sort of strange witchcraft activities, pay attention to your dreams. And I'm going to give you a prayer point that you need to be aware of. There's a prayer point that says, Lord, unmet, let me say it right, my father, open my spiritual eyes and unmask my enemies before me. This is the prayer you pray when you're dealing with what you suspect to be witchcraft activities at the job, especially when you, 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 you have a sense of who you think it might be. You pray, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. And show me the secrets I need to know about the witchcraft activity at my job. Just be very specific in what you're asking. And you will have a dream that will open up a revelation unto you to show you what's going on. Now, don't go out and confront everybody. Don't tell the world what you've seen. Continue to engage in, in prayer with the Lord concerning what he has revealed unto you. Because this is how you're going to get around it, all right? There may be some instances where God wants you to confront it, but right now I'm focusing on showing you how to put up a defensive against it. So God will show you in a dream that they're planning to do this or they're planning to do that. So you would know how to get around it. Um, so pray that God will unmask your enemies. Pay close attention to your dreams during this time. And uh, one of the things that I, I, you may find this hard to do, but do it anyway, play dumb. When you can see this happening, learn to act like you don't know what's happening. Keep the enemy's agents guessing as to whether or not you know what's going on. And But yet and still, there has to be a consistency in prayer. There has to be a consistency in your walk with the Lord as far as consecrating yourself. There's another prayer that you can pray, which is so important, because what happens is when you reach a certain point to where people are now trying to push you out the door, a lot of these people who are in satanic cults, 
it's the, 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 the practicing of astral projection now is becoming a widespread epidemic. It's almost like witchcraft is having a revival right now. And certain aspects of the body of Christ need to be resuscitated. So I'm giving you some of the points that I think would be useful to you. One of the things that you can do is when you begin to start experiencing astral projections, you have to understand that there are physical walls in your home and there are spiritual walls in your home. You have to pray spiritually to stop spiritual um, astral projection against your home. In other words, go through your house at night and begin to decree. I didn't just say pray. I said decree that the walls in your house would be covered with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Begin to point at the walls. Begin to point in closets. Begin to point at these different things because in the spirit Something happens when you decree. Decrees activate angels. Now, I'm not going to go deep into that. I'm just telling you to pray it this way. I decree, let the walls, the windows, and the doors of my home be covered with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. There are ways to pray that God will send angels to set traps for people. My God, my God, my God. I'm going to have to do a part two on this, especially on that, to set traps for people who are astral projecting. I pray with you now that God would loose his hunters and fishers to set traps for anyone who is astral projecting into your home, into your life, into your job, with the intent of causing you harm, for it is written that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And we pray this prayer now. You can also pray that God will place you in an envelope of fire. You have to understand that in the spirit, a lot of things that we think are impossible in the natural, they're possible in the spirit. And God can enclose you in fire to where the enemy can't touch you. So you have to pray and ask for this. But the reason why I'm teaching you how to defend yourself because a lot of times people don't totally comprehend that you can't openly engage in attacks and warfare with witchcraft and then go back to being normal. It's no longer like that. You have to understand the rules of warfare. Once you are in a battle with someone, there are two forces. There's a strong force and there, or should I say there is a um, two forces in, at battle. The lesser of the two will bow to the most powerful. So the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, if the Bible is telling you to be strong in the Lord, a lot of people are not strong in the Lord. Let's just be real about it. A lot of people are still growing. A lot of people are still developing in the Lord and learning how to use the power of his might, the power of his word. You know, Jesus told us um, that in Matthew's chapter, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 9 and verse 28, it says, And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? Referring to a devil. And he said, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. So there are some spirits, it takes prayer and fasting to deal with them. There are some aspects of witchcraft, it takes fasting and praying to deal with it. So you don't just get to, uh, I'm going to quote this scripture, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to live happily ever after. No, you have an enemy that's going to be on your trail until the day you die, all right? But you have to be encouraged and strong in the Lord that God has given you the superior weapons. For the Bible teaches us and it tells us that Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, why is it that a lot of people are hurt by witchcraft? Well, let me simplify it for you. Let's say Jesus had told you a scripture that says, Behold, I give unto you soap, soap to wash you from all the stench that can come from the body of doing regular activities. All right? Now, if you take that same context and that same logic, if you don't take the soap and use it, you will stink, all right? So the power that the Lord has given us in his word, if you don't take it and apply it, it won't profit you. 
you have to know how to properly apply. You can take a bar of soap, and if you don't take it out the pack and try to wash with it, it won't be effective. So there are ways to hold something in your hand, but still it's it's not effective because you're not using it properly. I remember years ago I had a, um, a niece. She was a little girl. She was sitting on the floor, and she was she was coloring with crayons, and she was just coloring away. And all of a sudden she got frustrated, and she threw one of the crayons, and she just got in a rage, man. And I asked, what's wrong? She pointed at the white crayon and said, it don't work. The white crayon, she's trying to color on a white piece of paper. She didn't conceive that the, the crayon worked. She figured it didn't work because she couldn't see it working. All right. Just because you don't see the word working doesn't mean it's not working. So you have to understand how to properly apply the word of God. You have to properly learn how to use the scriptures during the consecrations and the fasting periods so that you are at a place of being strong in the Lord and not weak in the Lord. When you're in a place to where you're under constant attacks such as that, you have to pray over your finances and your job daily. You have to hear me. You have to pray over it daily. You have to pray for promotions, pray for increase. Don't just pray for survival. You're going to pray, get something more out of it. Pray that God would increase your income and decrease your workload. There are, there are things that I've seen God do in the lives of people. One particular um, lady, um, I recall, she was fasting, and she began to um, share with me some of the things that would happen to her on the job and how the Lord was giving her victory in those things. Um, for an example, I tell this testimony because it, it shocked me what God was doing in her life. Um, we had did a fast at the beginning of that year. We started at January the 2nd, and th there were different options for the people who were fasting to fast. She chose to fast every day to 6 o'clock, and it was a 21-day fast. But by the time I had a conversation with her, she had been on this fast for six months. Like, whoa, you've been doing this for six months? Like, yeah. And she began to talk about how every time someone tried something in her job against her, immediately they were disciplined. A person lied on her that was a supervisor. The next day, there was a meeting. The supervisor was disciplined, was demoted. That Another supervisor came in and tried to do something else against her as well, tried to set her up. A meeting was held, the supervisor was disciplined and was reassigned to another position. So another man came in, he was a supervisor and he tried to do something to her. And she said she recalled in a dream seeing this man coming in trying to do something to her in the dream. And she said, she simply said in the dream, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. But the force and the power of that statement in the dream was so powerful that when she said it, it pushed him back. She was shocked that it pushed him back, so she said it again. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She kept saying it until she pushed him out of the door in the dream. The next day when she got to work, that man resigned. Okay? So there is a, a, a way to contend in the spirit without having to openly confront people. When you fast and pray for long periods of time, it gives you the strength in the Lord that you need to be able to stand against the forces of witchcraft, the forces of darkness, of whatever it's there. And you can pray for promotions. You can pray for the Lord to do wonderful things in your life. Real quickly, I'm going to give you some books that you might want to consider getting. One of the main books I want to point out, especially for those who are just battling witchcraft and you don't really know how to cut it off, it's a book called Operating um, that's not the right book, Lord, I wrote the wrong book down, but th the title of the book is Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven by Miles Francis. All right. Thank God that I caught that before I got too far. Issuing Divine Restraining Order from the Courts of Heaven by Miles Francis. Read the book. And there's a prayer in there at the end of the book concerning witchcraft. Pray it over your life. There's also other prayers that are there as well. Another particular book I would recommend is Destroying the Powers of Witchcraft 
by Ruth Brown. This is one that's a little bit more offensive, but it also shows you how she was uh, a young Christian, but God used her in a mighty way and showed her how to fast and pray and how to destroy the powers of witchcraft. And another particular book I would recommend is called Commanding Your Morning by Dr. Daniel Olukoye. You have to learn how to command your morning, how to command your day, so that when you begin to go into this environment, you have taken control of the spiritual environment before you got there. So there's so much more I want to share with you, but I'm almost out of time. So I recommend that you, you really be sincere with your walk with the Lord and allow the Lord to be your shield and your protection in all that you do. So that as you serve the Lord, um, you will see victory. So when you're dealing with witchcraft in the workplace, operate with a spirit of excellence and allow the Lord to promote you just like he promoted Joseph, just like he promoted Daniel. I'm praying for you on tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you now for this word. We thank you, God, that you have given us power over all the power of the enemy. We thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. We thank you, Lord, yes, for how you are blessing us, even in the midst of the evil arrows that are trying to fly against us in the place of work. We thank you now, Heavenly Father, for the wisdom and the knowledge that you are opening us up to now. And we decree and declare that we will move forward forever and backwards never. Even in our jobs and our assignments and schools, oh God, our businesses, we pray that you would envelope them in fire, oh God. And that the plans that the enemy has against us and the agents that he has against us, may you give us a shield of protection, we pray now, that the plans of the enemy will not prosper in our life. We are grateful and thankful unto you now as we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and thank God. Amen and amen. Well, I want to encourage you to stay encouraged. Even though it may seem like a strange battle, a long battle, just know that God is still with you and he will certainly see you through these times that we're in. We're living in a time where we need to know more and more about these particular subjects. And I will do what I can to help the body of Christ during this time. So as I always say about this time, saints, it's time for us to what? Stop playing and to start praying. God bless all of you, and I look forward to hearing, seeing, I look forward to saying more <laughs> next time. God bless you, and you have a wonderful day.